We're learning a lot more about Tim Walz's s Chinese connections. Last night, we told you he's visited China 30 times over the last few decades. He went to China for the first time in 89 through a government program sponsored by Harvard. And when he came back, he spread Chinese propaganda. Quote, I was treated exceptionally well. They are such kind, generous, capable people. And they just gave and gave and gave to me. Going there was one of the best things I've ever done. Waltz loved his time in China so much, he got married on the anniversary of the Tiananmen Square Massacre because he always wanted to remember the date. For his honeymoon, he went back to China and he took his high school students with him, which would usually cramp your style on a honeymoon, but to each his own. He started a travel company that would send him to China with a bunch of American students every year. And his chips were funded by the Chinese government. Local Chinese kids knew Walls. They called him the big-nosed one and foreign devil. But Walls swears those weren't insults. He loves it when little Chinese boys make fun of him. He spends so much time in China, he learned the language. Listen. Niemann Hama, Governor Tim Walls here. Happy Chinese New Year. This Spring Festival is a time to welcome and celebrate the New Year with a smile and let the fortune and happiness continue. Please remember to practice social distancing and wear a mask as you celebrate. Hey, Fa Tsui. Wall still has deep connections to the Chinese. In 2019, he delivered a keynote address to the Chinese Friendship Organization, a group with deep ties to Chinese intel. Did the Harris campaign know about this? How can a guy visit China 30 times and pal around with chai coms and have Chinese money change hands and you say to yourself, I want that guy in the situation room with me. This is the second time in a row Democrats have tried to install a guy with China ties inside the White House. And the media isn't digging into this because just like with the China virus, they're afraid of being called racist. Peter Schweitzer is the president of the Government Accountability Institute. How suspicious are you of this Walls China relationship, Peter? Well, we're basically 48 hours into this, Jesse, and it's already um, quite uh, disconcerting. Uh, because what I would say, the key component here is not just his ties to China, but his ties to the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, as you point out, he had this student exchange program. It was funded by the Chinese government. All exchanges by the Chinese government are managed by the CCP. And if you look at some of the local news reporting in, in uh, the Midwest of students who attended that program, they explain how Waltz told them that they were to, quote unquote, downplay their Americanness uh, when they visited China, which is an odd thing to say if you're engaging in cultural exchange. I mean, you wouldn't say to a Chinese national coming to the United States, downplay your Chinese uh, uh, nature. So, uh, you know, this has all the hallmarks of a close association with the CCP. Uh, as you pointed out, uh, he gave a speech in 2019 to a known United Front group that's linked to Chinese intelligence. We also know that when he was inaugurated as governor of, uh, of uh, Minnesota, he invited Chinese diplomats to uh, attend those events. And then you've got the issue of these Chinese police stations that we've heard about. You've reported on them. There are seven of them in the United States. These illegal police stations that are designed to intimidate Chinese nationals in the United States. One of them is in the Twin Cities. And it's actually run by a entity that is allied with something called Minnesota Global, which is a pro waltz organization. <laughs> Now, Governor Waltz has denounced the, the uh, police department in the Twin Cities for their brutality. He's done nothing about this unofficial Chinese police station. It just shows the willingness he will go to appease uh, the Chinese government. I have no evidence of this, but let's look at it the other way. This is Harvard. This is an army guy. And they send him over there for, what, 30 times. Maybe he's U.S. intelligence. Maybe he's not <laughs> Chinese intelligence. Maybe the U.S. is sending him over there. <laughs> Did you ever consider that? Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I, I, I would put that on the on the on the zilch level, uh, the zilch <laughs> scale. There's no way that's the case. And, and, you know, Jesse, the thing about it is you look at his statements on China, his defenders will say, oh, well, he raises issues of human rights in China. He really doesn't. He'll talk about an occasional case, but he engages in this ridiculous moral equivalence uh, on the anniversary of the Tiananmen Square massacre when he was uh, on the floor of, of the of Congress when he was serving. Uh, he brought this up. He said, yeah, the Tiananmen Square massacre happened, but every country has done this sort of thing. And he brought up Wounded Knee in the United States. Oh, now, God. in Wounded Knee, 30, 38 Native Americans were, were butchered in 1863, and it became a national disgrace. In Tiananmen Square, um, 10,000 Chinese nationals were butchered. And in fact, the president of China now, President Xi's wife, who's a famous singer in China, she actually serenaded the troops after the massacre, oh, applauding God. them for what they had done. So to equate the two and say somehow that, that Wounded Knee is like Tiananmen Square is a ridiculous comparison, and he knows better. Yeah, and uh, got married on the date of Tiananmen Square. Unbelievable. I mean, both incidents, despicable, but not comparable. Great investigative reporting, Peter. You're the only one doing it. Thank God. Thanks, Jesse.